Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be using different medias to create layers and layers of colour on our project. So I'm starting off in my large craft journal and I'm using this large um, collaged face from Natalie May Scrapbooking. You'll find the link to it in the description box below. I'm using my tinted gel medium to glue this down just because it's on the craft paper. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to be going over with paint anyway if I use clear it's just that was sitting on the top of my pile so um, don't worry about if you need to tint it or not you don't because we're going to be painting over the top of it. So just the most stabilo oil pencil I'm going in and really really roughly sort of drawing out shoulders and a little bit of her face so I've got a bit of a body shape. While I was doing this, I was thinking, oh, how am I going to blend this in so the background sort of fits in? Um, so what I decided to do is to add in some stamping with some text stamps. So I did pull out my grey archival ink, but I actually ended up going back and using black just so it stood out a little bit more. So I'm just really randomly using lots of different text stamps over the top just to kind of replicate what was happening with the collage paper in the background as well. Now one of the things that I am making sure that I'm doing is I am stamping over the collage tissue and over the bits of craft paper as well. Just sort of all blends in so it's you know not just the craft paper that's got stamping on it and the, the other paper doesn't so if that makes sense. <clears throat> now I'm going in with a pale apricot colour to quickly put a base colour on my image. So with the gessoed shoulders, obviously it's a little bit more heavy handed. With the face, um, not so much because I wanted to see the shading underneath. Now I've got my gloss sprays out and I've got blushing and Sedona. And I've poured them out into a little palette so I could actually paint them on. And with this I am just going to build up my layers of colour. So as you can see it is really really translucent. Um, you can see everything through it so you can go really slowly and build up your layers. You can see I'm also using my fingers to sort of blend in and if I get the paint somewhere I don't want I'm just using a wet wipe to wipe it away. I'm using the base colour that I had that sort of apricot colour as my highlight. I'm using the blushing as sort of a mid-tone and then the Sedona as my um, darker colour just for the moment anyway. I'm also going in and sort of drying it off as I go along. Now it does dry really really quickly. You can see it's a little bit streaky but that was okay because it's sort of giving me a little bit of texture. It is the reason why I kind of go in my fingers occasionally to smooth it out a little bit. But you'll see I'm just building up layer after layer of colour. So where I want it darker I'm just putting on another layer, letting it dry, rubbing in, building up another layer and so on and so forth. So you just need to be really um, careful as you're going along to see how that process is building up. Once I'd done that I w wanted to leave it to dry for just a little bit so I had a bit of an idea of where to go next. I did want to do something with the background to sort of bring it all together so I'm going in with some marine which is a bluish colour and blending it all together. Now you see where the collage paper is at the top how that is spreading out a little bit more because that paper is sealed. Down the bottom I didn't ha actually have any gel medium so the colour is a little bit darker because it sank directly into the um, craft paper. Because I've got that layer of blue down there now though that kind of seals the paper so I can start adding more layers over the top. I've put out another darker blue so this is night just to add some shadowy colours to it um, and again same process as with the face I'm just going in and blending with my fingers pulling across um, to get some depth. If I had it in a place I didn't want I'm going in with my wet wipe to wipe it away. You can see I'm also using a little bit of that blue to help shade the face as well which seems a bit funny going onto a skin with blue but obviously going over the reds it sort of creates a purpley tone which again sort of creates a really nice shadow effect um, with your piece. Now because 
this is quite a um, shiny product it's a gloss product obviously you can sort of see the shine from the light um, but in the close-ups you'll sort of see how this works a little bit better I'm now pulled out my um, distress watercolor crayons and these are a new product that I've just got my hands on I was do I want this do I not want this because I struggle sometimes with my um, scribble sticks I know they're not the same obviously but I was like can I use the same but I've actually found for this type of stuff it actually works really well it does work nicely over the top of the gloss sprays um, the white I was particularly impressed with I was able to draw in the eyes um, and because it blends with sort of the stipular oil pencil and so on I actually got really nice shading and coloring with it I was also if you rub a little bit harder able to blend it a little bit with my finger which was good just for this bit you saw me just before I started paint over the craft area of my journal I did seal it with a layer of um, gloss uh, sorry gel medium just so that um, I could then put that glaze over the top of the blue and that's basically what we're doing just adding a glaze layer after a glaze layer now I've got in with some of the gilt gloss medium or gloss spray and just splattered it and then this is the silver the sterling just to give like almost a starry night effect in the background and again it goes on it looks really really white when you actually um, dry it it's sort of got this beautiful metallic sparkle to it so at the moment I was sort of happy-ish with my face um, I did scrape off a little bit of the splatter usually I don't mind if it goes on the person but I actually wanted to leave the layers of color that I had and now I'm going in with the black on a paintbrush to create some drips going down the page. Now the black is a little bit um, deceiving in the fact that it goes on and looks almost a bluish grey colour. When you dry it, it is actually very black, um, which I forget about when I do this because I'm so used to using sort of pain, pain grey colours that I sort of look at this and go, oh yeah, it won't be a true black black. I didn't mind the effect in the end because I obviously did it deliberately um, but it, it always takes me by surprise when the colour dries it's like oh that really is black because it does come out looking like a, a dark blue or a dark grey. Once I've finished I've done a bit of splatter over the top as well this time I didn't mind that it went over her especially because it went over the shoulder areas um, it sort of added to the effect that I wanted. Now I'm just going with my stipular oil pencil to add a little bit more depth and shading to the piece. I'm, instead of using water, I'm using my fingers to sort of spread it out. I'm also sort of using these Distress crayons, a little bit watercolour crayons, or a pencil, sorry, to move the stipular oil pencil and blend it in a little bit more into the background as well. So you can see with the white pencil, it's actually standing up really, really nicely on those lips and sort of the highlight areas on her um, clavicle and her shoulders, or up on her neck really, because I've got the clavicle in the wrong place. Um, but it, if I'd used a white Posca paint pen, it would have been too stark. I wanted something a little bit warmer that blended in a little bit more. So I was really pleased that that worked so well. So to do the quote, I decided that I would use some new pens that I got with the papers, um, which are these Life of Colour Chrome pens. Now, I was incredibly impressed with how bright and how metallic these pens are. I wasn't necessarily expecting that. Usually when I've used metallic paint pens before, they've kind of had a yellow tone to it. These are sold as a chrome mirror effect, and they really do have one. So... Um, it's really hard to capture on on the screen the shine from it but um, you'll notice it sort of looks like a color shift when I tip the page and that's because of the shine and the, the metallic nature of the pens the other thing about it is usually with chrome pens and stuff sometimes they've got a bit of smell these ones didn't and they dried fairly quickly as well I did hit it with a heat gun but even then <coughs> I was able to do this pretty much straight away over the top so um, it didn't take too long to do which was good so I'm just going in with a white pen instead of a black to do my highlight or shadow drop shadow on it 
the I chose white because I had it was so dark in the background if I'd put black on it it would have got lost a little bit so I wanted something that would sort of stand up against the gold and push it out into the foreground so just going around on the bottom left hand side of all my letters really really quickly when I've forgotten to color in a letter I go back and put it in quite often I get distracted and forget some of my letters I don't know why at the moment I've just started to color in my letters I like the effect of it um, helps pop it out from the background a little bit as well you do you <laughs> but it's um it's a fun thing to do I don't know if anyone else used to do that when they were kids um, I sit there with a newspaper or a magazine and just color in all the the circles that I could see in front of me in all the letters so that used to keep me entertained uh, in the days of old before art journaling so I as I'm sort of doing this, I'm thinking, is this finished, is this not finished? But I was actually really, really happy with how this turned out. And once I'd done the lettering, I decided, unlike I usually do, that I was going to sort of leave it as is. I did go back and put a little bit more highlighting on, um, just to pop it out, because I really like that effect. Um, and you can see that in the close-up. But the big thing that really impressed me about this piece was being able to layer all those colours over the top of each other. And just by doing transparent layer after transparent layer, I found for me the control of being able to do those um, layers really, really helpful. Because they're so thin, they dry really quickly too, so you can see where it needs something a little bit extra. And if you don't like it, you can always use a wet wipe and wipe it away. Adding that little bit of watercolour crayon over the top, a pencil over the top to add that last little bit of detail, again to me really, really helped pull it all together. So I hope you have a go at just building up some colours. If you don't have gloss sprays, fluid acrylics work the same. You can get mediums to work into your products to make them more fluid and more translucent. You can do it with water, um, but it turns into a little bit more of a watercolour effect than the strong pigments, but experiment. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.